Aloha and Namaste. My name is Jürgen Steinmetz and I'm joining you from Livestream.Travel reporting for Itobo News. With me is uh, Mr. Deepak Rai Joshi. And uh, the reason I said Namaste is because he's in Nepal and that's what you, what you say when you say hello. And the reason I said Aloha because I'm in Hawaii and that's what we say when we say hello. Um, Deepak was the former head of the Nepal Tourism Board. He's been around in tourism for a long time, a very well known figure on many boards around the world and he's everywhere. And actually more important, he is the tourism hero for the World Tourism Network. Um, as you all know, the World Tourism Network right now has a network of um, 19 heroes in the world. These are people um, that have um, done something special specifically in regards to the COVID outbreak uh, in, in uh, taking leadership. And uh, Deepak is one of them and he's actually the latest tourism hero announced by the World Tourism uh, Network. Congratulations Deepak and welcome. Namaste and aloha. aloha. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Jürgen, for this uh, recognition. Uh, this is not an achievement for me, but this is uh, a motivation for me to, to act more. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, and, and I think it's it's well deserved and everyone agreed so. So, so you're the hero now in this business and that's really what we need. We need leadership. And we heard a lot about leadership, uh, starting of course, with the election in the United States and um, our now Vice President um, uh, Joe Biden uh, will be replacing Donald Trump at uh, the end of um, uh, January. And I don't know, what do people in Nepal, and what do you think about this? Uh, I think most of the people in Nepal also, they are happy with the result of this election because Nepal is uh, a country where Lord Buddha was born, the epitome of peace. And then uh, every Nepalese, they love peace. <laughs> so I don't know, but uh, you know, the uh, before uh, there was a kind of uh, a perception among Nepalese people about the, the earlier precedent uh, regarding, you know, the, his uproars, his uh, talks, his speeches were, uh, it seems like he used to promote uh, a hatredness, a kind of division within the uh, communities or societies. Uh, so maybe because of that, uh, in Nepal, uh, people are happy with this new election. And then uh, there is a big hope that a new new, uh, new chapter will be initiated uh, through this election, uh, promoting peace and harmony uh, globally. And I think that's what uh, many people in the world, including here in, in the United States, uh, are hoping. It was a very tight election and... Uh, President Trump is still fighting to win it, but uh, that's pretty much impossible. So I guess that's more than wishful thinking. So uh, many of the people I know, and specifically here in Hawaii, where 85%, I believe, Democrats, uh, we were all hoping for these results. And I think the world tourism industry, a uh, lot, of, lot of the people share this sentiment. Um, the United States uh, always has been looked at as a leader in, in many initiatives and, and and to be honest with you, without getting too much political, but as I said, we're not the BBC here, so we can say what <laughs> we think. I'm very happy about this. So, <laughs> especially, especially, especially people who are in tourism, I mean, the tourism fraternity, uh, that is more happy, uh, happier they are, because you know, the tourism is, uh, uh, is, is grown only in harmony and peace and then in friendly environment. So, people in tourism are, are um, happier, I think. <laughs> It's, it's a happy business. And we had an interview with a happy guy from Australia a few weeks ago. It's in our archive and his entire business is in regards to tourism happiness. And I think he started with this idea in Nepal. So Nepal seems to be the happy place where everything starts uh, to be happy. And I, yeah. Nepal is really different in, in, in a lot of ways. And it's specifically, maybe it comes through uh, the, uh, the history, it comes, uh, it comes because of the people in Nepal. What, why is Nepal, it feels like a little bit spiritual almost when you're in Nepal. <laughs> I, what are yes, your thoughts you are, about that? You, you are very, very right, Yogan. Nepal is uh, probably the most unique country in the world as our national flag itself is. Uh, our national flag is the only flag in the world which is triangular in shape. 
so <laughs> and then uh, it, it is it is the most diverse country on earth our lowest point from sea level is 60 meter and then highest is uh, 8848 that is mount everest and that is just in between the distance of 150 kilometer so it's, it's it's a vertical country not the horizontal country and then uh, so many, you know, the mountains, peaks, hills, natural abundance, uh, that kind of uh, uh, setup, geographical setup we have, beautiful, beautiful landscape, and that all gives a very good uh, spiritual value, uh, whatever activities we carry on, be it adventure or spiritual or village tours, every activity in Nepal uh, gives a spiritual value. So, so that's why uh, most of the visitors, they love to come to Nepal. And then very interesting thing is probably we are the uh, one of the few countries where our repeat visitors is very, very strong. People who come once, who, uh, the visitors who visit once, they want to visit again and again. That kind of magic uh, Nepal has. Uh, and then as I already mentioned, you know, the, the in Buddhism side, in Hinduism side, in other spiritual um, uh, centers are also here yogas, meditation, wellness, that kind of things are also here. So, so maybe because of these reasons, uh, Nepal has amazing value in tourism. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not all about climbing Mount, uh, Mount Everest. You don't really have to be in, in, in so-called excellent shape. You can go to Nepal for so many different reasons. So if, if, you're, if you're not a mountain climber, what, what is there to do in Nepal? There are so many things. For example, you know, the in cultural segment also Nepal is equally rich. In a small geography, we have 100 plus ethnic groups and 100 different uh, uh, dialects they spoke. Uh, whenever we, we, we um, drive or, or walk around Nepal, in every 30 to 35 kilometer of distance, we get a chance to, uh, to experience new culture, new, uh, you know, the uh, geography, new faces, new festivals new climate, that is there. And besides uh, mountains and adventure activities, Nepal is very, very popular for wildlife also. We have 12 uh, national parks, uh, so many, you know, the, the, the wild animals and then jungles we have. Nearly 40% plus uh, landmass is, uh, we have uh, uh, conserved as a protected areas. Uh, in conservation also, uh, Nepal has shown exemplary effort uh, we are the only country uh, which is going to double our the population of tigers, Royal Bengal tigers in 2022. We are going to double the population of tiger. And then uh, uh, this is the few countries, one of the few countries uh, where you know, the, we have been enjoying zero poaching years. So in conservation front also, Nepal has uh, exemplary role. Uh, uh, in, in For example, in 20 uh, kilometer of radius, we have seven UNESCO World Heritage Monuments. Uh, and Nepal has a history of never colonized history. And then culturally, historically, archeologically, and a wildlife uh, uh, in, 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 in mountains, in, in many fronts, you know, the, there are uh, amazing things. I, I do call, this is the country of superlatives. Tallest point on earth, uh, tallest settlement on earth, deepest gorge on earth, uh, so many uh, things uh, there are. So uh, this is a lifetime experience destination. And, and don't forget, it's, it's, the food is absolutely excellent. It's one of my favorite foods in, in the world. And actually, I have too. a very good news. I've, we now have a Nepalese restaurant right here on Oahu. It's not in the there tourist is. area, but if you visit Hawaii, take a taxi. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's called Himalayan something. You find it okay. if you Google it. And uh, you should definitely try it out. It's great food. It's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit Indian, but it's different, right? What makes Nepalese food a little bit different? Yeah, it is uh, less less spicy compared to Indian food, and it is very very hygienic. Different varieties in one plate. For example, you know the spinach to lentils to I mean the carbohydrate to protein to different other varieties. It is well mixed of many things to pickle. <laughs> so uh, uh, and then. Uh, especially during this uh, uh, pandemic time, I think Nepali food helps to build a good immu immunity uh, because uh, uh, very special hops uh, they use while cooking Nepali food, for example, 
turmeric, garlic, onion, uh, uh, these kind of foods are also well mixed in uh, in Nepalese food. So, uh, so this is uh, very very interesting. I, I would like to add one story also, Jorgen. Very true story. You know, the, all over the world, Nepalese people are very very popular uh, as a physically uh, very very brave and the mentally very very calm and cool. Be it uh, Sherpas or be it Gorkhas, who who fight uh, for you know the different causes. In, in many countries. Uh, and, and there is uh, a very strong reason behind it because of Nepalese food. They are very physically very, very strong and mentally very, very peaceful, calm and cool. So, so that kind of speciality is uh, Nepalese food highs. Uh, uh, many people believe in it. Yeah, and I, I certainly do. I love it. Now, Nepal, as you said, has so many things to offer and it's, um, it's such a beautiful place. I have to say, I've been to Nepal, I think five times, and I've never seen Mount Everest, but it's not like okay. you're bored if you don't see Mount Everest, it just has been cloudy. And with my luck, I was there on cloudy days. So it's always a reason to come back. And probably once you see Mount Everest, you want to go there every month because it's so beautiful, I would think so. Visit to Nepal is, uh, once is not enough. So <laughs> definitely, definitely next time. <laughs> yeah, I have some good news for people in Nepal, you can take home. Uh, now, Etobo News actually has a Nepalese language edition. So if you uh, really? go to our articles, you will have uh, languages from all over the world and just look for the Nepalese flag, what is very unique. And it's also spelled out and you will be able to read every single article in Nepalese. And actually, um, it has um, a special website even, so you can bookmark the site. So next time uh, you read Etobo News, you get it in Nepalese directly. The website is just ne.eturbonews.com instead of just eturbonews.com and then you get it in their parties. So that's, we, we... that's so great. That's so great. Thank you very much, Yogan. Because you know, the in if it is in Nepali language, it will help many uh, tourism communities who doesn't, uh, uh, who cannot speak English, uh, will be very, very helpful to them. You know, the in, in Nepal, our tourism is, uh, uh, most of the activities they are in, in rural areas. Uh, so community tourism, uh, village tourism, homestays are growing in Nepal. So uh, they will certainly get very good benefit out of it. Yeah, please Thank spread you. the word and, and uh, read it. Um, let me know how the translation is. It's probably not 100%, but I heard, I tried it with German, what I, of course, fully understand. And it was quite good. And it I stays there. So, <laughs> and, and not every word is perfect, but if we get it 80%, we're, we're doing well. Um, now, there's also more news in regards to elections and changes. Uh, one is in the United Nations World Tourism Organization, uh, UNWTO. Um, there are elections coming up earlier than expected, uh, and this was decided at their executive committee meeting in Georgia uh, just a few weeks ago. The elections are really coming up in January, what never happened before, and it's quite surprising, and many have been saying it's so the current Secretary General Zurab uh, Polikashvi from Georgia wouldn't have any one competing, but he does. The first, the, the first person competing is Her Excellency Mai Bint Mohammed Al Khalifa from Bahrain, and uh, there may be more coming. And um, and uh, so it's it's exciting time now for the UNWTO. Um, I know Nepal is a member of the UNWTO. What would be, what is your expectation for leadership in this organization? What do you want this organization um, yep. to be like? It's quite long, uh, Nepal is a member of uh, UNWTO. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know the reason behind declaring these dates uh, in different times, but uh, the timing is not so friendly, I, I believe, to uh, travel uh, in, in those destinations. And our expectation from uh, uh, the UNWTO General Secretary is uh, to, to accommodate, you know, the, the special destinations, many destinations, there is growing interest all over the world. And, but uh, somehow uh, we are not being able to address uh, the issues of, of those agencies. Uh, I mean, the, those communities. So one, uh, we need to accommodate more uh, we need to be more proactive uh, 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 
uh, in, in last three, four, five years, I'm not seeing the proactiveness in, in uh, the leadership in, in UNWTO, because you know that at this time, at, uh, in, in the history, we are going uh, one of the hardest time uh, in tourism, but there are very less uh, ideas being shared. Uh, tourism is the business which creates a platform for networking, for um, learning from each other, so that kind of things are also not there. So my expectation from uh, new leadership is uh, accommodate more, uh, be proactive, uh, uh, lead in a in a you know the uh, 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 lead creating impacts, be impactful. So in those lines, uh, we are looking for a new leadership and have a kind of passion in tourism. The leader who is not passion in the sector who is leading cannot produce good results. So I think uh, the person, uh, he or she, whoever going to lead, must be passionate in tourism, must be knowing the, uh, the, the, the basic natures of tourism, then only he or she can produce good results. So I'm hoping we'll get good leadership uh, uh, in, in this next time. Yeah, and especially if these are the most critical times, if there was ever a critical time for tourism, it is now. And we need these leaders and there's no room for politics, I believe. Uh, for people who should be established because they're um, they have a political influence and so let's let's hope for this the uh, is nepal by the way a member of the executive council uh i don't have idea about uh, that exact idea i will check but uh, nepal is member since uh, many years i think almost uh, two and a half decade uh, ago we are we, we are every year member of uh, UNW. Well, the reason I'm, I'm asking is uh, the executive, every fifth member is a member of the executive council and uh, they are rotating every year they're elected. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't believe Nepal is, but I may be mistaken, um, is a member of the executive council. What I noticed is that the UNWTO under the current leadership has catered almost exclusively to executive council members in the last couple of years in order, what I think, is to secure a, a vote if it ever comes back to election. So I'm wondering, just assuming Nepal is not a member of the Executive Council, um, mm. did this reflect the care UNWTO gave Nepal maybe, or not, not give Nepal, or gave Nepal, depending how you see it over the last two years? Uh, Nepal has not received, you know, the. Uh, good coverage or response or um, accommodative nature. Uh, uh, nature. Uh, so uh, I will check. And then um, I myself is also, I don't know, I have not uh, decided yet, but I am willing to uh, apply for this uh, UNW General Secretary, let's see. So I'm going to uh, inquire these all things uh, in these two to three days of time. And, and talking about passion, there he is, <laughs> Mr. Passion in person. <laughs> that, that, that would be wonderful. Uh, Deepak, it has been a pleasure talking to you, and like always. And um, I really wish you all the best. And please keep us informed with your plans and any plans. And I also um, uh, wanted to uh, um, say thank you for playing a role also in our youngest member um, of our global association families, what's the World Tourism Network, what will be launched officially on December 1st, and you're on the executive board. And uh, it's an organization already with members in 200 and I think 21 countries right now. You find it if you go to WTN.travel. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I'm part of it, and uh, we're all working hard. Uh, to make this a success. So there's a lot going on in tourism. Um, there, there are people out there uh, like yourself that really want to make a difference and they understand the importance of this industry and the econo economic impact this industry has of so many countries and people and businesses um, and, uh, and also understand the times we're going through are probably even um, if someone would have told me in March at ITB when it was canceled because of Corona, we ever would get into a situation we're in now, um, I would have not believed it. Um, so I know we have been planning actually in March an event for Nepal, but for the Nepal Tourism Board, what was canceled. 
And um, what we did though, we had the first event discussing Corona in Berlin at an ITB that didn't take place, but we had people who were stranded in Berlin actually attending our event at the Grand Hyatt Hotel. And we did this together with Pata at the time. And um, so I think we're one of the first really realizing um, the problem and the issue we were just guessing. Um, but even in the worst case scenario, I have to admit, we did not think it would come that far. So let's all work together to get out of this situation, make it a better, healthier world, relaunch tourism in a responsible way, and uh, look at Nepal as a model in so many ways, because responsible tourism has always been part of your country, and um, your people are passionate in this industry. And uh, uh, so let's make this an example of the world. And uh, thank you so much, Deepak, for being part of our show here. Thank you again. Thank you very much. I'm always together for tourism and we'll work together uh, for the brighter days in tourism. Thank you. Global tourism. Namaste. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for the recognition.